Lord family, our JILC Dream Team is currently recruiting for media and worship. If you're interested in being a part of these two powerful groups, you can sign up today at any of the Connect Centers. JILC Dream Team, we're better together. JILC Family Empowered Kids is the place to be every Sunday morning for your children. Fun, games, activities, and ministry that's right on their level is sure to make an impact on their lives for Jesus. If your kids are missing Empowered Kids, they're missing it. Empowered Kids, every Sunday morning, right here at Jesus' Lord Church. Empowered Live is now broadcasting with a live studio audience. The only thing that's missing is you. If you'd like to be a part of our Power Pack studio audience, join us every Monday at 8 p.m. for our Empowered Live broadcast with Pastor Kevin McGinnis. Empowered Live, Mondays at 8 p.m.
Do you have struggles, hangups, and addictions? Jesus is Lord Church is proud to announce the launch of our brand new recovery program, Stand Recovery. Join us on the first and third Tuesday of every month, starting on September 5th. Stand Recovery, finding freedom for your mind, your body, and your spirit. Are you ready for a little pick-me-up to help you get through your work week? Join us every Thursday for Jesus is Lord midweek service at 7 p.m. For more information, visit us at the Connect Station. Calling all teenagers ages 13 to 19. Are you ready to show the next generation the love of God? Join our Empower Youth Services on the second Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m. Young adults ages 20 to 40, are you committed to creating a culture that connects and cares? Join us for our next Young Adult Night on the third Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m.
Welcome to Jesus is Lord Church. I'm Pastor Kevin McGinnis. Thank you for tuning in today. I believe this word is going to empower you, refresh you, and supercharge your faith as you're believing God for miracles, breakthrough, and increase in every area of your life. Take an opportunity right now. Hit that share button. Help us reach people for Christ. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to be back in a few moments. We lift up our voices. We lift up our voices. Yanamaso kodri yanamaso kodri yanamasi. Yanamaso kodri yanamasi ni yanamasa. If we could just lift our hands tonight, God, you're so worthy. You're so worthy, Jesus. Yanamaso kodri yanamasi ni yanamaso kodri yanamasi. Kodri yanamaso kodri yanamasi. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, come on and lift your voices. Yanamaso kodri yanamase. Yanamaso kodri yanamase. If we could just stand up to our feet tonight and lift our hands, we come to worship you, King Jesus. For you are worthy, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Father, for the sacrifice, O oh Father. Yanamaso kodri yanamase. We lift our voices. We lift our voices. Yanamaso kodri yanamase. Who will stand against me? No one can. No one.
Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to you. Come on and sing that out. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to you. Can we sing one more time? declaring to the atmosphere that you have the victory tonight. We thank you, Jesus. We give you glory tonight, oh Father. You're so worthy, oh God. For greater you, Lord, in all the earth. You are great and greatly to be praised. Come on and lift your voices in this place. Come on and shout. Come on and give them glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. For you are more, oh Father. You are more than enough, oh Father. We give you glory tonight, oh God. We come to declare, oh Father, how great you are, oh God. We worthy, oh God.
up in this place. Oh, 
flowing from the heart of God, the blood of heaven, crashing over us, the tide is rising, rising. Turn me around, lace my feet. 
thank God. Come on and shout in this Come place. Come on, let's praise him together. Hallelujah. Can we stand on our feet tonight? Put our hands together. Come on, everybody stand. Let's praise the Lord. Come on, we've come to praise him tonight. Lift your hands and say, I believe in miracles. Lift your hands and declare, I still believe in miracles. Do you? And tell somebody, tell them, say, tonight's your night. Come on, tell somebody, tonight is your night for a miracle. Hallelujah. I feel it in my spirit. I believe tonight somebody's life is about to drastically change because the power of God is in this place. I want you to join me and read the word of God. Turn with me to Mark chapter 5. I'm going to ask all of you that love the Lord with all your heart. You love God's people. You love to see people saved and healed and delivered. Share this word tonight on social media with us. Those that are watching online, share it with a friend. Somebody that needs hope. Somebody that's battling depression. Somebody that's dealing with sickness. The word of God has the answer to every situation. How many of you believe we serve a miracle working God? Are you ready? Mark chapter 5, verse 25. I'm reading from the Passion Translation tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Now in the crowd that day was a woman who had suffered horribly from a continual bleeding for 12 years. She had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors, yet in spite of spending all she had on their treatments, she was getting worse instead of better. But when she heard about Jesus healing power, she pushed through the crowd and came up from behind him, touched his prayer shawl, for she kept saying to herself, if I could just touch even his clothes, I know I will be healed. And as soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. For she knew it. For she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. Now the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Let's go there. Genesis 1 and 1. And then you could sit down but not go to sleep. I'm excited about this, this word tonight. Because I know somebody's life's getting ready to change. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You may be seated. From the beginning of time, we serve a God of miracle power. The Bible says that in the beginning, say that with me, from the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That word created is the Hebrew word, the word bara, which means to make from nothing. God did not come to rearrange things, he came to create everything. He breathed, the Bible says, out of nothing into a handful of dirt. And the Bible says, and man became a living soul. The Bible says that he separated day from the night and light from darkness. Jesus Christ of Nazareth was born, the Bible says, as we know, in the womb of a virgin, defying medical science and all of the agnostics. That son became the healing Jesus the miracle-working Son of Almighty God. Our Lord, our Savior, He is a miracle-working God. If you believe that He is a miracle-working God, clap your hands and give Him praise in the house of God. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 3 and 8, the purpose of Christ coming to the planet Earth, that He came to undo, dissolve, and destroy the works of the devil. We see in Acts the 10th chapter and the 38th verse that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Everybody shout, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So in Mark chapter 5, we see that there was a woman that had an issue of blood. And you need to understand, this was not just something that was temporary. It was a long-lasting issue she was dealing with. The Bible says, for 12 years, say that with me, 12 years, she struggled with this issue of blood. She, because of a hemorrhaging and her bleeding, she was an outcast of society.
She could not fellowship. She could not socialize with people because she was unclean. Are you listening to me tonight? But there are certain things this woman did that activated the miracle power of God into her life. Number one, she heard the word of God. Say that with me. She heard the word of God. What you hear will affect you. What you listen to will affect you. I tell people all the time that faith comes by hearing, but also fear comes by what you listen to. That's why we need to hear the word of God. We need to receive and digest the word of God every day. Did you ever find out how much how much strength comes by spending time in the word of God? Your mind is healed and your mind is refreshed when you spend time daily in the word of God. So the Bible says that she heard about Jesus. She heard a word. Everybody shout, I'm hearing a word tonight. See what you hear and what you listen to, I'm going to say it again, has the power to change your life. How many of you are glad today that you came to the saving knowledge of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and your life has never been the same? How did that happen? By hearing. So then, Romans 10 and 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Tell somebody, be careful to what you listen to. You got to be very careful what you listen to. You got to guard your ear gate. You got to be careful of the eye gate, what you watch, what you listen to, because it will affect you. This woman had an issue for 12 years. Tell somebody, take your issue to Jesus. See, I'm not here to play church tonight. I'm not here to give three points in a poem. That's not going to help you. I'm here today to activate and release a tangible anointing that is going to heal people tonight in this room and people are going to be totally healed and delivered watching me wherever you are tonight because there is no there is no distance that can limit or stop or hinder the power of God. Say amen somebody. The Bible tells us that God went about doing good through Jesus because you do understand even though he was 100% man, he was one 100% God. You do understand that, don't you? And everywhere he went, he healed the sick and he set the captives free and he, 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 he demonstrated his power over the forces of nature. That's the God I serve. I don't know who you're serving, but I serve a God that is awesome and unlimited in power and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Give him praise in the house of God. If you're going to praise him, do it right. Open up your mouth and make some noise for Jesus Christ. The... Somebody shout, it's a night of miracles. And I believe tonight that the power of God is in this place. And I believe that God's word has not changed. There are certain people that believe that the, when the last apostle died and when Jesus ascended into heaven, that miracles were banished from the earth. But it's not in the Bible. The Bible says that Jesus said before his ascension in the book of John, it says, he said this, he says, I'm getting ready to leave you. He says, but the works that I do shall you do also, and even greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. Everybody shout, we're called to do greater works. See, you don't, have, you don't understand. You and I are called to continue on in the ministry that Jesus Christ began on planet Earth. So how are you and I going to do greater works? Jesus told us how he says I'm going to ascend but the Holy Ghost is going to descend and I'm giving you power to do the works of God and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they... everybody shout it's a night of miracles get on your feet and give him praise if you came expecting tonight There were no exceptions in the healing ministry of Jesus. He healed the lame and he healed the deaf and he opened the eyes of the blind. On one occasion, Jesus healed with one touch. On another occasion, he healed with a second touch. Oh my God, on the third occasion, he put dirt in his hand and spit in it and put mud in the eyes of the blind man. Why did Jesus do this? Because th there was a belief among the Jewish people that there was healing virtue in the spittle of the firstborn male in every family. Jesus was saying to the Jewish audience, I am the firstborn of my father and I have healing power. Bang! He was healed because Jesus is the healer. He heals blood disease. He heals leprosy, which was a death sentence in Bible days. Somebody 
somebody shout amen. Leprous bodies were healed with one touch of the master's hand. I'm here to tell you just one touch can make you whole. Just one touch of that man from Galilee can make you whole. Jesus healed then. Jesus heals now. And Jesus heals forever. He said, I'm the Lord God. I change not. I've heard theologians say that miracles are not for today. They are dead wrong. That is a lie from hell. Jesus said the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you need healing in your family, get on your feet and shout aloud, amen. Healing in your finances, get on your feet and shout hallelujah. Deliverance for a loved one, get on your feet. Jesus can heal you tonight. Jesus can restore you tonight. He can set you free from any affliction, any addiction, tonight. That's the God I serve. People that have no faith put it off to one day. I believe tonight somebody's life can radically change. Clap your hands and give him praise if you're ready. So this woman had an issue of blood. She was an outcast. But she heard the word. She heard about the works of Jesus. She heard about the miracles. So she heard. She received the word. Unless you receive what I'm preaching, you've wasted your time tonight. She heard the word. She believed the word. The Bible says she not only believed the word, received the word, she spoke the word, she acted on the word. Are you listening to me? And she received her miracle. Because faith is an action word. The ABCs of faith. Faith is A, an action, B, a belief, C, a confidence that God will do what he said he would do. You have to have that expectation to receive what I'm preaching. Coming to church does not qualify you for a miracle. Needs do not qualify you for a miracle. But if you come with expectation, you will leave this church every time different than the way you came. Because this word has power. It's a two-edged sword. It's alive. It's quick. It's powerful. And when you come into the atmosphere where the power of God resides and the word of God is preached in truth and demonstration, God is obligated to confirm his word according to Mark 16 with miracle signs following. So if you came tonight expecting God, expecting to receive something, believing for a breakthrough, ready for a transformation, believing for the salvation of your children, this is going to be a season of miracles in every area of your life. You need a miracle in the financial arena. Get on your feet and give him praise. As a matter of fact, I feel in my spirit to do something. I want every lady, get a pocketbook, put it on the stage, stretch out pocketbooks across this platform. Because today as I was in prayer, the Lord showed me people's bags overflowing with money. If you get a pocketbook, get a wallet. I don't want to see men coming with a pocketbook. But if you got a wallet, throw it on the platform. Don't worry. Nobody's going to steal your stuff in the house of God. Because I'm here to tell you there's an anointing coming on people in this season that's going to bring great wealth into people's lives that you can finance your dream finance the whole souls the end time harvest of souls that God's going to use you in a mighty way now if you don't believe this keep your bag under your chair but if you believe because you're in covenant with God because you're a giver and a tither you have a right to every blessing that is outlined in this Bible if God said it he'll do it if God spoke it it shall come to pass somebody shout a loud amen. So this woman, the Bible says, she was willing to press through the crowd. Tell somebody you got to press through. You got to press through the pain. You got to press through the opposition. There was a great crowd, the Bible says, that surrounded Jesus. A great crowd. that The Bible says that people almost suffocated Jesus because they were in need of a miracle. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight, but there are some people in this house that I know that God has assigned me to tonight. Not everybody in this church is assigned to me. Not everybody in this room I am assigned to because there are two kinds of people in our lives. Those that we're assigned to 
and those ones that we're attached to. You got to know who you're assigned to. You got to know who's connected to you because not everybody in your life is assigned to your life and anything that can be attached can be disconnected. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Everybody shout, I'm ready for a miracle. Everybody shout, in my home, in my finances, in my health, in my business. Shout if you believe it tonight. Who's ready tonight? Who can I agree with tonight? Who can I join my faith with tonight? Stop telling me you don't believe God. God can. God can do anything if you will believe. All things are possible. Shout amen, somebody. So Jesus, if he can save you and he can redeem you and deliver you from a lifetime of sin and break the power of sin and break the curse, somebody say amen. He can heal you. Jesus healed many ways. Jesus healed one-on-one. Jesus healed in mass prayer. Jesus healed in long distance. You remember the prayer. The centurion came for his son that was lying and sick at home. And the centurion said, my son lies at home sick. And Jesus said, Jesus just sent the word. And the man was healed because the power of God is not limited by geographical location. God's power is not limited by time, distance, or space. That's why I am amazed about the wonders of technology. I can speak the word here and God can heal somebody in China right now because God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at one time. Some of you give more credit to the devil and more glory to the devil than you do to God. You're always talking about pain and sickness and depression and you're giving glory to the devil. Why don't you start glorifying God and thank God for his countless blessings that are upon your life. Then you'll see help. Then your strength will come. Then you'll be refreshed. Then you'll be revived. Then you'll be empowered. Then you'll be increased. You got to train your mouth to agree with the word. the Gospels, there are 34 distinct miracles, 34 distinct miracles, and countless more of miracles are recorded from Genesis to Revelation. A matter of fact, the Bible says that all the books in the world could not contain the works, the miracles of Jesus. Say that together, all the books in the world that freaks you out right there. That blows my mind that all the books in all the world couldn't contain all the works and miracles of Christ. That's the God I serve. I believe in miracles. Tonight, somebody's leaving with a miracle. You don't know what I had to fight to get here tonight. You don't know what I've dealt with over the last three days because the devil knew what was about to happen tonight. And he knew that if he could stop me from coming tonight, that he would hinder somebody's breakthrough. But the devil is defeated, and he's too late because I'm here and I'm preaching tonight. And somebody's leaving with a miracle in your family. Somebody's getting ready to receive a phone call in 24 hours that you received the job you've applied for. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout miracles, miracles, miracles. Miracles in my home. Miracles in my children's lives. Miracles in my finances. Miracles in my mind. Miracles in my health. Miracles in my relationship. Miracles, miracles, miracles. Everywhere I look, I see miracles, miracles, miracles. Don't sow your seeds of doubt upon me because you're religious and you've fallen out of relationship. The God I serve is alive. He's not dead. He still works in power and demonstrates his glory. Shout amen. Be seated. Mark 16. Before Jesus left this world, he said to them, everybody shout his people, his disciples, the church, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature 
he who believes, shout, that's me, and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe shall be condemned. And these signs, say that with me, and these signs will follow those who believe. One more time, say it. And these signs will follow those who believe. Now watch this. In my name, they will what? Counsel demons? They will what? Encourage people that are possessed? Take somebody out for a sandwich, helping, thinking that's going to help a spiritual condition? In my name, they will cast out. You don't counsel demons out. You cast them out. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it will by no means hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick. That's what I'm about to do. That's what you're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Because we're not ashamed of this. We're not ashamed that we talk in tongues. We're not ashamed that we're filled with the Holy Ghost. We're not ashamed to be representatives of the greatest kingdom in the world, the kingdom of Almighty God. I'm not ashamed of what I believe. I'm not ashamed of who I represent. I'm not ashamed to call, be called a Christian. Many of you are, but I'm not. My wife's not. Many leaders in this room are not because people know what we represent and everything that is connected to us exemplifies Jesus. If you're not ashamed of this gospel, make some noise in this place. Lay hands on the sick. <laughs> Glory. 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 And they will recover. If you want what you never had before, you've got to do what the woman with the issue of blood did. You got to do what you've never done before if you want what you never had before. How many of you want what you never had before? Then you got to do things you've never done before. I've learned this a long time ago. Desperate people do desperate things, and radical actions produce miracle results. You got to be desperate. People say, Pastor, when is my breakthrough going to come? When you get desperate, you're not desperate enough. When am I going to see a miracle? When you get radical and you press through a crowd and you defy the opposition and you push past the pain and you push past what people say about you. This woman didn't belong among the people. She was supposed to be outside the city. She could have been killed for what she was doing, but she was she was taking, willing to take the risk because she heard about the works of Jesus and she heard about the miracles that he had performed. Somebody shout amen. Some of you have overcome some things. Some of you shouldn't be here tonight. If you allowed people to label you and limit you by what they said about you, you would still be bound in sin and bound in darkness and living under the control of the devil. But somebody was willing to bust to move and press through the crowd and receive what heaven has for you. That's why you're here tonight. You could have stayed home like everybody else, laying in the lazy boy, watching Netflix, but I'm here to tell you you're here tonight and you are not leaving this church. Not one person, not one person, not one person is leaving this church the same way they came. But I'm here to tell every one of you that have faith in God that you will leave this place strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost. Shout aloud, yes. How do I receive a miracle? Well, you got to receive the word like the woman with the issue of blood. She heard and received the word. You got to have faith in God. you got to have faith in what you're hearing. Two kinds of people, those that have faith and those that mock faith. Are you listening to me? you got to have faith in God. How many of you have faith in God? Wonderful. You attend this church, you'd have to be out of your mind not to have faith. You're, you're receiving faith every week. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Tell somebody, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Not in government, in God. Not in a preacher, in God. Not in a religious institution. Have faith in God. 
not in your husband or your wife or your children or your religious pedigree or your degree. Have faith in God. Sounds simple, but most miss it. Because it's a simple belief. When you hear it, I believe it. That's how you were saved. You heard the word. You believe the word. You believe with your heart. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You believe that Jesus Christ arose from the dead on the third day. And by faith you're saved. So if we, we receive salvation by faith, everything else in this world that we're believing for, we receive. Everybody shout, it all happens by faith. Everybody say, I have faith in God. And when you have faith in God, you believe Mark 9, 23. That says nothing is impossible to them that believes. You believe John chapter 14 that says whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. You believe 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 that whatsoever is born of God overcometh this world. And this is the victory that overcometh this world. Even our faith. Clap your hands if you have faith. The woman received a miracle because she had faith. She had faith in what she heard. And because of what she heard, it motivated to press through the crowd. Never lose your press. Never allow anything to push you backward. But always push yourself. Put, be pushed forward. The word of God will push you forward. Your pastor will push you forward. Men and women of God that are ordained of God will not come down to your level and stay there. They will raise you up and pull you to the next dimension. That's what the word can do. Faith does not leave you where you are, but faith brings you higher. Isn't that what it says in the Bible? That I've given to every man the measure of faith? That means you're not on the same level today. Your faith is growing. Why? Because of religion? No, because of relationship. That's how faith grows. That's how faith expands. You go from one level to the next level. You go from righteousness to righteousness. From one level of faith to another level of faith. From one realm of glory to a greater dimension of glory. Everybody shout by experience and by relationship. Say amen. The Bible tells us without faith it is impossible to please God. Are you still here? He says without faith it's impossible to please God. But those that come unto God must first believe that he exists that, and that he is a rewarder. Shout he is a rewarder. He rewards those that what? Diligently. God does not bless passive people. God blesses those that are persistent in faith. Shout amen, somebody. Men like Noah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, stay with me. I'm going to hit you hard. I'm going to keep moving. He says, by faith, Noah built an ark. And he saved his family and generation. Shout it with me. By faith, Noah built an ark and saved his family and his entire generation. By faith, everybody say, by faith, Abraham looked for a city whose builder, say it, and maker was God. By faith, Sarah, say it with me, conceived at 90 years of age to produce Isaac, the son of laughter. The Bible declares in the New Testament, have faith in God, have faith in God, have faith in God, have faith in God. The reason why most people don't like to be around me is I challenge their faith because most Christians are in the emotional realm all the time and there's no miracles in the emotional realm. You gotta step out of the emotion into the dimension of faith. That's where you receive the tangible touch of God. Give the Lord praise all over the house of God. This woman had no cure. She was bleeding. She was sighing. She was dying. She was hemorrhaging to death. But one day she heard something that changed her life. Do you remember when you heard about Jesus? Oh, if your life hasn't changed, you haven't met him. It's impossible to continue in a lifestyle of sin and tell me you have an encounter with Christ. No, 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 no. You have religion, but a relationship with the Son of God will transform every phase of your living. I'm not the person I used to be. I don't think the same. My appetite has changed. My daily diet has changed because of Jesus. 
How many of you have faith in God? Shoot both hands up and give him praise. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9, in Matthew 9, she pressed through the crowd, touched the hem of his garment, and immediately, I love this, she was healed. Tonight, you've got to press through and touch him. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what's opposing and contradicting your promises from God, but you've got to press through it. You can't allow it to stop you. Anything in your life that is impeding your progress with God has to get out of the way. Nothing can stand in your way in becoming the person that God has created you to be. Shout aloud, amen, somebody. She didn't let anything stand in her way. She tried everything. Nothing worked. She tried doctors. She tried specialists. She spent money. She tried everything. She tried man. Man couldn't help her. She spent her money. That didn't help her. Medicine couldn't help her. Man couldn't help her. But there's one by the name of Jesus. I said, my God, some of you forgot the power of that name. There's so much power in that name. He's the greatest name given among men under heaven whereby men must be saved. That is the name of Jesus. There's nothing more powerful than the name of Jesus. If you love Jesus, can you jump to your feet and give him praise on this Thursday night in the house of God in a place that is electrified with the supernatural power? Tell somebody before you're seated, slap them a high five and say, press through and touch Jesus. Oh, I know you've been through trouble. I know you touch somebody, slap them a high five and say, press through and touch Jesus. I know people have tried to destroy you. Press through it. I know you've been dealing with abuse since you're a child. Press through it. I know you've been dealing with depression. Press through it. I know you've been dealing with turmoil and crisis and financial setback. Press through it. Tonight, I want to know how many of you are ready to press through it. How many of you are ready to touch Jesus tonight? How many of you are ready to leave this place completely whole? Everybody begin to hear about all that happened. This woman with the issue of blood, 12 years. She was broke. She was busted. She was disgusted. They counted her out. 12 years, hemorrhaging. No more money. No more medical care. No more specialists. But I love this. I love this. And most people preach over it. She came from behind. Tell somebody you're coming from behind. Tell somebody you're about to make a comeback. Yeah. She came from behind to touch the hem of his garment. Some of you thought you weren't going to come back from what you've been through. Some of you thought you were going to lose everything in that lawsuit. But God sent me here tonight to tell somebody in this room, you better get ready because man has counted you out. And the devil thought you were finished because he knocked you down and almost made you lose everything, including your mind. But God sent me here tonight to tell you, you're about to make the greatest comeback of your life. You're coming like the woman from behind. You're going to touch the hem of his garment and you shall be made whole. Come on, jump on your feet and give him praise. So this woman started a trend. This woman started a trend. Because four chapters later, Matthew 14, we read in verse 35 on the screen, please, we read that they brought to him all who were sick. That they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched his hem were made perfectly well. Let's be honest tonight. Let's keep it real. Everyone in this room is dealing with an issue. This woman had an issue for 12 years. What's your issue? Family, physical, financial, marital, emotional. Everyone has an issue. Let, let me help you tonight. Please, let me help you. Listen, if you have an issue, take it to Jesus and your leadership. Never take the issue 
کشید Turn around. Look at the people around you. Sheep. Don't counsel sheep. Leaders counsel sheep. Past everybody in the church knows my business. Yeah, because of your big mouth. There are two major miracles to everyone. There's two major, two major hindrances to most people's miracles. Everybody shout the two M's. Your mind and your mouth. Everybody say the two M's. Because as you think, you are. Your words have creative power. So what you say is what it is. What you say is what you see. What you talk is what you walk. That's why you got to be careful what comes out of your mouth. Since Monday, I felt like I was hit by a freight train. I was lying, laying in bed for the last two days, and I was going to, I was going to sit this one out. And the Holy Ghost said to me today, he said, I want you to get up and I want you to preach like you've never preached before. And today when I got here, I was completely healed. Because it's a night of miracles. And what I'm preaching to you is what I live. I don't preach what I don't live. I can't stand people that don't live what they preach. And the Lord said to me, he said, if you're going to preach it, you better lead by example. And tonight I'm here to tell you that when I lay my hands on you, there's a transference of the anointing that is coming on people. Chains are going to be broken. Curses are going to be reversed. Blessings are going to be activated. Everyone that touched him was healed. Whatever you're dealing with, take your issue to Jesus. You may be discouraged. Keep believing. Keep praying. Declare the word of God. Hear me, hear me, hear me. There's a big difference. Somebody said, well, pastor, you know, you know the facts are, the facts are, listen, the truth changes facts. There's a big difference between facts and truth. The fact may be that the doctor's prognosis is not good. But the truth says, James 5. See, we either believe this or let's just shut it down. When I was away with my family on vacation, I sat with two preachers. Two preachers. And I said to them, either we believe what we're preaching today or we have no business being in ministry. Talking about COVID. That's all they were talking about was COVID, COVID, COVID. COVID is nothing compared to what's coming upon the earth. We either believe this or we don't. We either believe that God keeps his own or we don't. We either believe the Lord is encamped about those that fear him or, or we don't believe it. We either believe that we're covered by the blood or we don't. We either believe that we're anointed and gifted and called and chosen or we don't. We either believe that we're destined for power and a blessed life or we don't. We either believe that we have favor on our lives or we don't. If we're going to live it, let's believe it. If we're going to believe it, let's preach it. If not, sit down and shut up. The truth says no matter what the doctor says, the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. That's the truth. The word is truth. The psalmist David said, thy word is truth. He says, above my name, Jesus said, is my word. He says, the grass of the field will fade away, but my word shall endure forever. See, I can tell those of you that have a word life because when I preach, something leaps on the inside of you because you know that you're walking into the greatest season of your life, of health, of healing, of prosperity. Some of you, my God, you think your life is over and the devil's going to take you out if you don't shake that lukewarm, depressing spirit off of you. You know, I know people who prayed for a miracle, prayed for healing, and they died. Yes, 
And if they had faith in Christ as their Savior, then they received their ultimate healing. Because Paul said in Philippians 1.23, to depart and leave this world in death and be with Christ is far better. For I'm hard pressed between the two. Having a desire to part, be with Christ, which is far better. Everybody shout, it's far better. Shout, it's far better. You think my father is in heaven tonight feeling sorry for me? You're out of your mind. Paul said it's far better to be with the Lord. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. But some of you need to really ask God for a revelation of heaven and eternity. Some of you need to ask God for the realization of eternal life. we're not raptured if we're not raptured when it's our time to go we'll all die from something but until then God's word tells us Isaiah 53 that the same same back that carried the cross to take all our sins away he bore the stripes that take our sicknesses away can somebody shout amen the question is what do you believe whose report will you believe somebody preach back at me now whose report do you believe i believe the report of the lord what is the report who what is the report what is the report come on you read your bible 20 hours a day what is the report he was wounded for my transgression he was bruised for my iniquity the chastisement of my peace was placed on his body and by his stripes we are scream it out we are healed get on your feet shout we're all healed We're all healed. We're all healed. We're all healed. We're all healed. Act like it. Shout like it. Worship like it. Praise like it. We're all healed. We're all healed. Physically, financially, emotionally. We are all healed. In Jesus' name, and by faith, shout like you know it's done. Sit down. Matthew 8, 16 says, Jesus cast out the spirits with the word. He healed all who were sick. Everybody shout, all who were sick. Not some, not a few people. Did Jesus say or did he not say that we would do greater works? What are you waiting for? It's time to bear fruit. It's time to restore the prodigals. It's time to heal the broken heart. It's time to preach deliverance to the captives. It's time to set people free. Shout amen. All who were sick, he healed. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the great prophet, saying he himself took our infirmities. Who did? Who took them? Who took your infirmities? Jesus took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. If you're believing for a miracle, I'm going to say it again. Number one, you have to receive the word of God. Every miracle begins with the word. Every miracle begins with one word from God. There are some people, Dr. Rose, Terrence, Rosemary, Kathy, They study the Word of God like they're studying a textbook. You don't read the Bible like that. 
I could read the same passage over and over again. Every time I read it with the help of the Holy Ghost, which is the great teacher, counselor, advisor, he shows me a new facet, a new, a new, he sheds new light on that scripture. Well, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. It's not what you confess, it's what you live. It's not what you say, it's what you believe. If you're believing for a miracle, you've got to receive, number one, a word from God. The paralyzed man was unable to walk until he received the word from Jesus. Mark 2, 11, rise up. Take up your bed and walk. In Luke 5, 4, Peter and his business partners, they didn't catch any fish all night. They were unsuccessful in fishing until they received a word from God. Launch out. Into the deep, Jesus said, after they caught nothing all night. They were tired. They were weary. They were discouraged. But they listened and obeyed the instruction. And let down your nets for a catch. And what happened? How much did they catch, Liz? How much did they catch? They caught so much fish that the nets began to break. In another passage, they had a call for other boats because the harvest and the catch was so big that the boats began to sink. How would you like that kind of blessing? How would you like to be so blessed this year that there's not a pocketbook big enough that can hold the money that God's going to pour into your lap? How would you like to be blessed like that? See, we need to stop declaring it and start believing it. Because this is not a year of confession. This is a year of miracle possession. This is not a year to say it. This is a year to see it. This is not a year to just talk it. This is a year to walk in it. And I made up my mind for my family. This is going to be the greatest year of our lives. I don't think you heard me. You're part of this church. That means you're part of our family. Get on your feet and shout aloud, Amen. Just one word. God will create a situation so that you can experience a revelation of his power. God will create situations, allow situations that you can come to a new level of revelation. The Bible says God has his way in the storms of life. Jairus received news that his daughter had died. He said, Jesus, come home with me. My daughter is at the point of death on the way. You know the story, the woman with the issue of blood pressed through, touched Jesus. The hem of his garment was healed. On the way to Jairus' house to heal his daughter, Jairus got news from those in his house that your daughter has died. Don't bother Jesus anymore. But Jesus said, do not be afraid. Keep believing. Everybody thinks. Everybody thinks. My friend Jonathan Cain that wrote the song, Don't Stop Believing for Journey. They think he was the originator of it. No, Jesus was. Don't stop believing. I'm here to tell every one of you tonight, no matter what you're going through, don't stop believing. I don't know what you're facing tonight. Don't stop believing. I don't know what report you received. Don't stop believing. I don't know where your children are at, what they're into, what your grandchildren are bound by. Don't stop believing. If God gave you a promise, you can take it to the bank because God is not a man that he should lie. If God said it, he will do it. If God spoke it, it shall come to pass. The problem is, is that you need a little bit more faith. We need more faith in the church. We need more faith in the body of Christ because right now faith is at a all time low. Jesus said to Jairus, I know your daughter just died. He says, Don't be afraid, keep on believing. She'll be made well. You know the story. Jesus showed up, she was raised back to life. God's word is filled with powerful promises, covering every need of mankind. Maybe you have a need tonight of physical healing. The Bible tells us if it's healing you need, Psalm 103, 2 and 3 is your prescription. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget 
not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals? Everybody shout, all my disease. I want you to notice that again. It doesn't say he heals some or most. It says he heals all of your diseases. Shout amen. What is a miracle? A miracle cannot be performed by the hand of man. Miracle is the divine intervention of God in the impossible circumstances of men. What is a miracle? It's an extraordinary event taken as a divine sign of God's divine intervention in human affairs. Miracles don't go where they're needed. Of course, you saw it tonight. People said they needed miracles. Not everybody will receive one because miracles don't go where there's need alone. Miracles manifest where they're expected. Are you expecting? Let me see your hand if you're expecting. I want to agree with you. I want to join my faith with you tonight. Many times to experience the miraculous, we have to be willing, like the woman with the issue of blood, to do the ridiculous. Press through the crowd, crawl through the mud. Today, many people in this church, they want to, be, they want to look cute. They've lost their passion for praise and lost their passion for worship. The altar's open for worship and you sit in your chair because you've lost the enthusiasm for serving and worshiping God. What a privilege it is to come together, Pastor Chuck, in one mind and one accord and collectively in one mind and one accord lift up the holy name of Jesus in praise and worship. Somebody give God praise right now. Some of you are missing another moment. Do not miss your next moment. Of course, this is a miracle moment tonight. You don't want to miss it. I've learned this. Your decisions and your actions, your decisions and your actions are always based on what you believe. Say that with me. My decisions and my actions are based on what I believe. That's why Jesus said in John 13, 17, if you know these things, do them. James 2.20, faith without action or works is dead. There are certain prayers I found that only get answered when we take action. The woman with the issue of blood, she was healed because she took action. I read this today in Matthew 9.22 of the TM translation, and I'm getting ready to pray now. Jesus said to the woman after she touched the hem of his garment, because you took a risk of faith, now you're well. Because you took a risk of faith, now you're well. The anointing, the power of God is tangible. It's here right now. The presence of God is strong right now. The spirit of God, the anointing of God is only tan not only tangible, but it is transferable. We see it throughout the Bible. We see it in the changing of the guard from Moses to Joshua. We see it from Samuel to David through the horn of oil. We see it throughout the Bible from Paul to Timothy as he laid hands on his son in the ministry. We saw the transference. Faith does not just come by hearing. You do know that. But faith also comes by impartation. Paul said to Timothy, I am persuaded that the faith was in your mother and in your grandmother. That same faith resides in you. So that means faith was generational, it was transferable. Are you with me? Shout amen. amen. I want to transfer tonight the anointing to some people. There's nothing more valuable than the anointing, the power of God, the presence of God. Everybody stand right now. I feel it here. Lift your hands right now. No human being should have to tell you what to do next. But right now, I need you to press in and with all your might, lift your voice like a trumpet and cry out to your King and Savior. Cry out to your King and Savior. I don't hear anyone. I don't hear one, vo I don't hear one voice. Block out every distraction. Come to Jesus. Press through and touch him tonight. Touch him tonight, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same again. Once you touch him, he'll turn around and touch you. My God, we're here tonight because Jesus touched us. Somebody tonight, right now, Jesus is touching you right there in that bed. 
Some of you are dealing with sickness and infirmity online. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed wherever you're watching. Be healed now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet through your lungs, into your stomach. I command your body to be healed and your temperature to be regulated right now. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, by the name of Jesus Christ and the authority that is in that name, I rebuke sickness, I rebuke disease, I rebuke infirmity. I command your body be healed at this moment. In Jesus' name, be healed, be delivered, be set free. Everybody in this room that's ready for a miracle on the count of three, I want you to work, move out of your seat and join me around the center of this altar where I'm standing. One, two, three. Come now. I said move quickly. I said when you're desperate, you move quickly. When you're radical, you do what you've never done before. See, some of you are still religious. you got to break out of that. Lift your voice and praise your king right now. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, pray right now. Fire of God fall in this church tonight. I thank you for your fire that's falling on people now. I thank you that this Sunday we're going to bring people because we're leaving this house on fire tonight. And this fire will spread. And this fire will grow. And this fire will increase. This fire will expand and touch this region. This fire, God, will touch Patchogue. Will touch and touch Hopesville, Holbrook, Medford, Yapank, Corum, Gordon Heights, Holbrook, Farmingville, Ronkonkoma, Shirley, Riverhead, this entire area. Let your fire fall upon young people tonight. In a powerful way, God. Everybody lift your hands, close your eyes, and pray in tongues. If you want the Holy Ghost, then you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be. Jump up here. I'll pray for you. I'm talking about a major miracle. Wave your hand. Now jump up here with me. I want to pray for you. you. Need a miracle? Jump up here with me. I want to pray for you. Jump up here. I want to pray for you. Nobody needs a miracle. The Lord doesn't have me preach to people that are not here. I can tell you that. Some of you need a place to live. Jump up here. Some of you need a better job. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, never the same again, never the same again, never the same again, never the same again. Let your fire come upon you. Let your presence come upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In 
need three Holy Ghost women jump up here. Three Holy Ghost women jump up here on my team. Pray for this young lady. Now, now's the time. If I've not prayed for you and you desire prayer, come now. Glory. Glory. How many of you believe for a better paying job? Listen, if I was believing for a better paying job, I wouldn't do this. I'd get excited about it. How many of you believe for a better paying job? Mike, let me tell you something. As I was praying for you today, how are you going to know God's will in this season of your life? You're going to make twice as much as what you were making. If not, you're going to take Now this is where faith has to come up. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. I told you I'm going to push people this year and challenge people's faith. You can't grow without challenge. Hallelujah. Andrew, come here. The anointing that's on me is going to be activated through you. And your sister's going to be set free. Hey! You got to take it all the way in. You got to take it all the way in. Take it all the way in. Somebody scream. that camera to somebody else. I want to pray for you.
supernatural prosperity is coming to you. Supernatural prosperity. And remember, that is the Lord thy God, Deuteronomy 8.18, that has given you the power to acquire the wealth. The Lord is going to prosper you and your wife. And what's going to happen is not going to happen by the hand of man. What's going to happen is going to be come to you by the hand of God. And the Lord says, do not be distracted when prosperity comes. For many could not handle the wealth that I placed upon them. They took their eyes off of me. But the Lord said, as you focus on me, I will give you the very desires of your heart. And what you never had in an earthly father, the Lord says, I will give to you as your heavenly father. You will lack not a day in your life. great wealth and strategies to get it. Innovation, ideas, supernatural concepts. Lord, as I pray for nine people in this world that have become millionaires, I pray that this would be a family that would become a millionaire. Lord, I pray that you raise up people this year that would bear the burden of me and my wife. People that would carry the vision to the next level. That I would not have to be concerned about anything monetary. But people would just say, Pastor, whatever the need is, I'll write the check. You're going to be one because God can get it through you, so it's coming to you. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Come here, Liz. Come here, Liz. Everybody praying still? I'm not an entertainer. I'm a man of God. This year, you're going to make three investments. Those three investments are going to change your life. Glory to God. 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 Lord, you said out of this house you would raise up a revival generation. And I pray that this young lady would be one of the mighty revivalists that would come forth through this ministry. As she sees herself the way you've created her, not as people as man have labeled and limited her. But she will see you the way you've created her to be. Father, I pray today, tonight, that this expectation in her has been increased and elevated by this word. And Father, I thank you that from this night, she will no longer be on the same level. I thank you tonight that you're catapulting young people to the next level of influence, increase, and effectiveness. Now everybody in this room give God the glory. I transfer this blessing right now. You watch what I'm telling you. You watch what I'm telling you. It's going to happen. That's why the enemy tried to take you out of this house. Because the enemy knows your potential. And he fears your potential. But you're going to kick the devil's teeth in this year. Da 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 da. Kevin, come here. Where you're working now, you will not always work. God has a great plan for you. Now, this is very serious. This is very serious. This is very serious. There are people here tonight, you've lost money in investments over the last three years. Stocks and in other things. And the Lord says, I am about to divinely, supernaturally compensate you for monies that were lost. Did I not say in Proverbs 6 and 31, if a thief is found, he must restore seven. Did I not say in the book of Job, 
that I gave Job twice as much back as what he had lost. Did I not say in Isaiah 61 and 7 that I will give you double for your shame? But the Lord said, I reward, for I love justice and I hate robbery and wrongdoing. For I will faithfully give you your recompense in truth. For the Lord says this night, know this, saith the Lord, that there's nothing in your life that you're believing for that I will not just meet, I will exceed the need. The Lord said, this is the year of exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. For God said, eye has not seen and ear has not heard. Neither has it entered into your heart all that I have prepared for those that love me. Seek me with all your heart. Don't ever seek things. Don't ever seek materialism. Don't seek money, fame, or fortune. But seek me with all your heart. And the Lord says, I will give you everything you desire that is in accordance with my word, which is my will for your life. When you're asking for God's will, the Lord says, seek me in, your, in my word, for you hear me and know me through my word. I speak to you through my word. So you're asking, how do I know you? How do I hear you? Open my word. Seek me every day, and I will reveal my perfect plan to your life. For many of you have been praying and seeking me. You've been asking, when will my family come? The Lord says, as you open your mouth this week, I will fill it. As you open your mouth, I will fill it. As you give the invitation, they will respond. People will come, and your family shall be saved, saith the living God. Glory. 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 Glory, glory. If you have not been prayed for and you'd like me to pray for you, before this anointing lifts off of me, come now. The Lord says, be careful who you receive counsel from. You have one shepherd. You have a chief shepherd and an under shepherd. Some of you are confused because you're receiving, you're receiving counsel from voices that are not assigned to your life. You've asked others outside of this house that are not, you're not accountable to and do not know you for direction concerning your future. The Lord says you're seeking direction from wrong places. The Lord says you have a shepherd, you have a pastor that loves and cares for you. You have a leadership that loves you and believes the best for you. Stop running to and fro. Didn't I not say in the last days people would look for people to tell them what they want to hear? But stay in the house of truth. Be planted where you can flourish and grow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, Rose, come here. Lift your hands. This attack in your mind that comes and goes. This constant battle in your mind. It will be broken tonight. Do you want it to be? Everybody stretch your hands this way. Come on, young people. command every assignment of the enemy. Father, you're restoring the years she lost. You're redeeming the time. When I lay hands on her tonight, Lord, I thank you for your power. Thank you for the anointing that breaks chains. I thank you for the anointing that lifts burdens. I thank you for the burden-lifting, yoke-destroying presence that's here tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command this mind to be free, clear. Lord, I thank you right now for the mind of Christ. You said you have given us, and we are to put on the mind of Christ. Lord, as I lay hands on her tonight, I thank you there will be no more emotional setbacks. But I thank you, God, for a great season of development. Great season of expansion, increase, and growth. Spiritually, emotionally, financially, all fear, I renounce you, all forms of fear, go in Jesus' name.
I have it. I pray a prophet's reward. I pray, God, that you'd give them double of everything I've ever had. Double answered prayer. Double favor. Double provision. Father, I ask you, every, things that were headed in my direction, I pray that it would come to them. Bless them. Answer the prayer that's been a longing in her heart. Burden that she's carried for over 15 years. Do it. This year, do it, God. Do it by your power. Let that anointing increase now. Let the anointing of wisdom and counsel, let that anointing increase to share your word. Let revelation and divine downloads of glory be released into his spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you'd open the eyes of his understanding in a deeper way. God, I pray that every day in my own life that you'd show me things that I've never seen before. I pray, God, right now that you'd increase his capacity for divine revelation. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory. Glory, glory. Everybody in this room, if you're seated or standing, it doesn't matter. Just lift your hands and worship God. Those online, stay tuned. Jesus. I'll be right back. Jesus. 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 Precious Holy Ghost. Precious Holy Spirit. This is your year of vindication. Get ready. Vindication. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, mighty presence. Mighty presence, mighty presence. It's on you. It's on you right now. The mighty presence of God. 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 frustrated the enemy's aggravated because he's done everything in his power by trying to change God's word he's, you've experienced challenge on many levels but the Lord said the enemy has challenged God's word but he can't change it and the Lord says you're about to see things that you've been believing for come to pass Warfare at times has been intense, even bouts of anxiety that comes. But the Lord said, tonight is your night of freedom, worry, stress, and anxiety is lifting off of you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Your year of vindication, that's the word God gave me, vindication. The Lord says tonight, as you go home, you're going to be completely refreshed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. 
do your work. Have your way in his life. going to connect you with a faith business partner. Not someone in the world that claims to be a Christian, but somebody that's fruit speaks for itself. I'm going to connect you with wealthy people, as I've done in the past. But the Lord said, this time, you're going to give me all the glory says tonight I'm cutting things away from your life that are hindering your growth words that have been spoken over you I cut it off tonight people that have strategized behind the scenes trying to sabotage sabotage what God's plan has been but nobody can stop nobody can curse what I have blessed All these pocketbooks represent a life. These wallets represent a life. There'll be no lack in any of these lives. If you're not in covenant with God through giving, you will never have abundance. You will never prosper robbing the, robbing the God that gives you all blessings. But tonight I take authority over poverty. Poverty is a spirit. You may be dealing with lack, but lack is a season. It's not a sentence. I pray abundance over every family of this church. I pray abundance over every business person here and those watching me. Those that message me today and say, Pastor, I did everything in my power to get here but because of sickness I couldn't make it I command you to be healed not tomorrow right now you're feeling it right where you are that presence that's coming into the room that is the presence of God God is healing you where you are you're being strengthened right now go ahead praise him wherever you are right there online praise him you, that's it God's touching you You're feeling what we're feeling. There are people here tonight that have never been in a church like this. But you know in your heart it's right. Because there's a peace. There's a peace in this house. There's a presence in this house. The presence of Almighty God. Glory. For you are our shepherds. We shall lack nothing. The days are coming, as I was in prayer a month ago. The Lord said there'll be one person that'll cover the monthly budget of this ministry. God's going to bless people supernaturally in this church. Forty, fifty thousand a month, whatever we need for the ministry. Pastor, I got it. I got it. God's blessed me like that. Because for us to do what God has called us to do, somebody has to prosper. Somebody has to increase. Everybody lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you for your blessing that is upon my life. Tonight, I've heard and I believe the word and I decree that wealth and riches are in my house. Lord, I thank you you're sending now prosperity in every area. 
of my life. I will not live in lack. My broke days are over. My famine is finished. My dry season is done. The greatest days of blessing, breakthrough, and increase are on the way. In Jesus' name, I rebuke that spirit of poverty. Say, I've heard the word. Now I confess according to my faith that the greatest season, the greatest chapters, the greatest days and years of my life are ahead of me. The worst is over and the best is yet to come. Lord, I thank you now as I honor you tonight in giving. I will not tip you. I will not give what's comfortable. I will use my faith and I will give something sacrificial. After all, you sacrificed it all just for me. So now, Lord, I return a portion as I come to you in giving, in worship, in Jesus' name. Keep playing that. Keep playing that. I want every one of you to come grab your belongings. And at this altar, do not go back to your seat, but at this altar, I want you to get your offering in your hand. If you give electronically, pull out your phone and stay at the altar. I want you to give the greatest gift you can tonight to God. Now, as the Lord dropped in my spirit, I had something different planned for this Sunday. But the Lord said on Sunday, again, declare a special miracle service this Sunday. After that, I'll begin a brand new Easter series that'll continue for four weeks up to Easter Sunday. But this Sunday, this Sunday, I need you. I need you as you're sowing your seed now. There are people here tonight that are going to sow $1,000. Somebody's going to sow a $5,000 seed. The rest of you obey God. People are going to sow 5,000, 1,000. Obey God. Obey God. You'll be able to look back in the future over this night and say, that was the night I broke the cycle of lack. That was the night I broke free from lack and limitation. Go ahead, right now, right now at this altar. Now don't fool yourself because you're not fooling God. Use your faith as you give. Use your faith. Those of you tonight that are visiting, be sure to join us back here this Sunday morning at 11. I want every one of you, please, to bring one person. Please, please, I'm going to beg you. I'm going to beg you. Please, just bring one person Sunday. Just one person. That will bless me more than anything you could ever do for me. Just bring one person with you. One person with you. Glory to God. Glory to God. we got water baptism coming up. We're going to bypass the announcements tonight. But remember, this Tuesday night, a very special heart-to-heart. You need to be here, ladies. My mom who's watching tonight, God's touching her right now at home. Allie, we missed you tonight, Mom. We love you. God's healing you right now. Everyone that's watching, we love you. God's touching you right now. Some of you have already been healed. When I get off this platform and go to my office, some are going to text me and say, I'm feeling better already. We love you. We thank God for you. Every one of you that's ready to worship God in giving. How many of you will say, Pastor, I give you my word. I will bring somebody Sunday. That's all I'm asking you to do. If you could do something for me, bring one person Sunday. How many of you will do everything in your power to bring? Will you help me, Rhonda? Rhonda, will you help me? Will you help me? Will you help me? Mike, Janine, can you bring one person Sunday? Could you do it? Everyone, let's bring people to the house of God. I feel the wind of change blowing in our direction. I feel the wind of change blowing in our direction. Online, we love you. Have a great night. So your best as you go.
Tonight, everyone, fellowship is open. I believe you were blessed by today's message. If you're ever in the Long Island area, come and check us out. Olga and I would love to connect with you. Every Monday is a revival prayer service at 7 p.m. Miracle Midweek at 7 p.m. And then our Sunday morning worship experience is at 11 a.m. Now, parents, your kids are going to have an absolute blast and empowered kids. That's every Sunday. There's no charge. They're going to love it. Now, if you have any prayer requests, send them to me right now. Prayer at JILC.org. Stay connected with us. Follow us on all of our social media platforms and download our brand new Jesus is Lord Church app today. If you want to be a part of what we're doing, invest, sow a seed right now. Go to the website, JILC.org. Until next time, be blessed.